You are listening to the Fancy Free Podcast, where my guests and I tell our most embarrassing funny stories so that we all feel less alone in our imperfections and forge connection through vulnerability and humor. I'm Joanne Jarrett, and I'm your host. And you guys, I'm super excited today. I'm actually fangirling a little bit. I have with me today Kristen Cook, who's one of my very favorite TikTokers. And you guys will know exactly who I'm talking about when I say she's the girl with all the questions. (laughs) I love her so much. Kristen is a plus size tall girl going through life, stumbling through motherhood and balancing self-love while also not knowing anything she's doing. She shares all of her weird questions and struggles so that other women feel more normal and not alone. So I think our philosophies are very aligned. And Kristen, thank you so much for being with me today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Yeah, for sure. Okay, tell us how long you've been doing TikTok, because I discovered you several months ago, but I haven't actually gone all the way back. And I'm not very good at TikTok, so I don't even know how to tell like how long somebody's been on there or anything. But tell us how you ended up being this TikTok phenomenon. Oh my gosh, Uh, I'm not even good at TikTok. I don't even know the exact (laughs) date I started. I think it's been around a year. And what's weird is I I don't do social media. So I, I don't Snapchat or Instagram until recently or Facebook even. So TikTok, it was my very first platform. I made oh, one no. silly video and was like, okay, that was fun. And it just went from there. That's so crazy. All right. Well, you guys, if you want to find Kristen on TikTok, she's at Kristen, K-R-I-S-T-E-N dot cook, C-O-O-K. She has 383.3 thousand followers and she's had 8.5 million likes. So if you haven't seen her and you're not following her, you're missing out. You got to get over there and get that done. I will actually put a link in the notes at fancyfreepodcast.com backslash or not backslash. I think I dated myself with a backslash (laughs) (laughs) slash episode 125 so that you can go on there and then click to find Kristen on TikTok. So much fun. Don't take my word for it. Listen for yourself. I'm going to give you a little bit of audio of some of Kristen's TikTok videos, just so you can see kind of the feel and the flavor of what she's doing over there. Am I the only girl out there that doesn't feel like they actually belong in the girl club? Hear me out. I have no idea how to contour my face. How do you color in your eyebrows every day to make them look so good? How do you wear light colored t-shirts all day without pitting out? How do you guys wear bralettes, those beautiful lacy bralettes? Do they make them in like a 3XL? How do you wear lipstick all day without it coming off on your teeth or your food? Can we please normalize nightgowns? Not like sexy, lacy nightgowns, but like the nightgowns our moms used to wear. To the floor, flannel, huge, comfy. You wearing a bra underneath? I don't know. You pregnant? I don't know. You got snacks in there? I don't know. Okay, people that work in fast food, do you judge people when they go through the drive-thru and they have their passenger seat is full of a different drive throughs food? Like, like I would never, ever go to Taco Bell for their quesadillas and Burger King for their Hershey pie, but like, do you guys see that? I can't be the only one that would check the food schedule to see which days specifically not to fake sick on. Like if it was turkey gravy day, I'm coming to school. Double burrito day, you can bet your ass I'm not faking sick that day. Um, Teriyaki dipper day, I could stay home. Ladies, send this to your friend as a reminder. The friend that has like the long wiry black whisker that comes out of their chin or like middle of their neck. Um, Just a reminder to tweeze it. Sometimes I forget (laughs) and that scares me. I may not have done the whole four-year college university thing, but I did just complete four entire sleeves of Thin Mint Girl Scout cookies, and I did it all in one day. When girls say they're wearing period underwear, a lot of time they're like, oh, I'm switching from my thong to my cheekies for the week. Girl, mine are medical. Over the belly button, tight to hold everything in and up, usually red. We're not the same. Okay, ladies, what's the secret? Rompers. I want to be in them. It's almost summertime. They're so cute. But how are we going to the bathroom in them? Is there a class you have to take on how to get them back on by yourself? Is it a secret? I did get stuck in a sandy can a couple years ago because I could not get my romper back on and I had to call a friend. I'd like to avoid that. Yes, I'm a parent, but I don't know if I belong in the parent club. Every time I'm around other moms, I don't know what they're talking about. Does your kid go through sleep regression? I'm like, I don't know what that is. Those cloth baby wraps that they only, those are hard. They're confusing. They don't work. They're complicated. I don't know how to work them. I had to Google what age do you send your kid to school. Sizing for kids' clothes, that's confusing. Apparently, they're supposed to be in a car seat until they're 17. What method are you using for punishment? I don't know. Mine? I'm not going to use one of those things to suck my kid's snot out. Okay, questions for the ladies who know what they're doing from the ladies who don't really know what they're doing. Hello. What is hair training? How do you wear your hair down in summer without it sticking to your sweaty back? Or do you you guys don't get sweaty back? How do you keep your purses so clean? Mine's like filled with taco sauce packets and gum. Does contour go here, here, 
or here. I saw a lady do it way up here. Is there a dry shampoo out there that makes your hair not feel gritty? Anyone's figured out the strapless bra without getting side boob, let me know. I'm an adult, but I don't feel like I belong in the adult club. I don't know where to buy stamps. I don't wash my lettuce before I eat it. Really, any vegetable. I don't send thank you notes. I'm super thankful, I just don't send the note. I've never taken professional family pictures in matching flannel. I do not own one pair of heels. Not one. I just feel like I should be better by now. There's a list of things that don't make sense to me. Can't wrap my head around. For one, that someone can sit and watch an entire movie wearing jeans and shoes or like a coat. That's it. That was my list. My biggest flex as a stay-at-home mom with no income is signing up for TV subscriptions, watching the entire show, and then setting an alarm to cancel the subscription before they charge me, and also turning my daily contacts into weeklies. Blanks, what did I miss about who you are and what you do? I'm a mother of two. I have a four-year-old son and a two-year-old daughter. I'm a wife. I'm married to my husband. We've been together about seven years, married about three. We live on a large piece of land out in Olympia, Washington. I've always grown up in this area, and I'm a recent stay-at-home mom. Oh. So I've worked up until a few weeks ago, so that is brand new to me. Wow, that's yeah. so exciting. Congratulations. Thanks. Yeah, it's, it's definitely been an adjustment, but the yeah. cost of childcare was more than my my monthly check. So we just yeah. kind of made that decision of, well, this is kind of pointless at this point. But so far, so good. I feel lucky to be home. Oh, that's great. And you mentioned school. Are you planning on going back to school and studying or was, was that just a flash in the pan or what? Uh, it flashed in the pan a bit. I wanted to be an ultrasound technician. So I, I started my prereqs and did a little bit of that. But yeah, just time, money, focus on the kids. Everything just kind of took a pause with COVID. I'm guessing everybody just kind of their lives got on hold. So yeah, we're adjusting to a new normal. Yeah, for sure. Well, gosh, when your kids are two and four, it's kind of hard to focus on anything but them, really, honestly. It, it, 100% a full-time job. And they are at the ages where they're getting into everything, running around. It's full-time. They're not reasonable, so they can't keep themselves safe. You have to do it for them. (laughs) So crazy. Oh, my gosh. My kids are 16 and 17, so I'm I'm ahead of you. But I remember those days like it was yesterday, and it was super fulfilling but super exhausting. And you mentioned in one of your recent TikToks that you ate two pieces of pie for breakfast. And what I want to say about that is good girl. I love that. You gotta do what you gotta do. (laughs) I don't even know if you were kidding or serious, but I'm like, my girl, because when it's my birthday, September 11th, I always go to Costco and get a big, huge apple pie. And then I eat that sucker morning, noon, and night until it's gone. I'm like, hey, if I put put cheddar cheese on it in the morning, like protein right there, fully balanced meal. (laughs) Pretty much like a breakfast sandwich at that point. Mine mine was no cheese. Mine were like the chocolate peanut butter frozen pies in the little individual boxes and two of those for breakfast. And that just started my day. So I mean, that was just, that's a normal Wednesday. Yeah. Okay. So two days ago, I decided I'm going to eat nothing but produce and protein until my body is back to where I want it to be. And then that very night, my daughter came home from a cookie shop where she works and bought brought cookies. And I was like, yeah, I'm eating those. And then the next day I took my daughter to a doctor's appointment and she's like, eh, uh, let's go eat before I go back to school. Cause you know, she's a senior yeah. and she has senioritis. And so of course we went out for pancakes and I had <laughs> huge pancakes. So I'm not doing well, Kristen. So it's, I get it. I'm there every single day is a new food struggle. And that is a, the realest thing I could say every single day. I'm like, okay, we're going to do good. And then it's like, I forgot we have a pizza in the freezer. So there's that day <sighs> that's done. God, I know. I was like, wait, I have two beautiful tomatoes from my garden left that are so perfectly ripe. We have to have BLTs yes. for dinner. Duh. We have to. You know, I have hello. And, you know, I was like, well, I guess I could just have a BLT salad. And then I'm like, no, no. maybe tomorrow. <laughs> okay, thank you for understanding me. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, let's get to know you a little better with your rapid fire questions. If you had 24 hours in your home alone, which I know you can't even imagine, mm. With no pressing to do is put the to-do list away. What would you do? I would watch Gilmore Girls, eat pizza, take a nap. Mm -hmm. And then to be honest, I would clean because cleaning is my high. Like if the kids are gone, I deep clean, scrub, get things organized. And then I sit there in my clean living room. There's nothing better. You bask in the glory of the clean house that is only going to be clean until your kids go. Absolutely. It's a very rare thing. (laughs) It's like exercising, like you don't want to do it and it sucks doing it. But then after you're like, okay, cool. That's why people do this. Totally. Every once in a while, if I have a minute alone, I clean and then I sit in that one clean area, even if it's a corner and I'm like, nice. This is good. Yeah. (laughs) 
Like, don't go into the kitchen, but like this couch is so clean right now. Uh-huh. And is there one area of your house that you're kind of psycho about? For me, it's the kitchen table. I'm like, you guys, this table cannot have anything on it. I don't want to see clutter. And then there's like clutter everywhere else. And the kids are like, what planet are you? Yes, from? You know, it's the kitchen table. It is? See, I knew, I knew, I knew we were sisters. backpacks don't go there. Shoes no, don't go I'm there. Right. Yeah. And then I always clear it off. And then like everyone looks at me like I'm crazy because they're like, well, everywhere else has junk on the counters. Why can't this? And I'm like, because that's my one. That's one. Just uh-huh. leave it. That's yeah, please let my eyes rest on something yes. that's decluttered. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. What is something ex- unexpected that's changed about you in the past few years? I think TikTok, first of all, like without having any social media, TikTok has just been huge. It's a Now it's a word in our house. You know, my son knows if I'm doing a TikTok. So that all is new and weird to me. And then the struggles I talk about with my body positivity and eating and all of that stuff. The not caring anymore has started to actually change. I was so self-conscious about my body and and my size for so long that talking about it out loud, I had no idea that it would actually be helping me. Like reading all the comments of people saying, oh, I feel the same. I, you know, I feel fat when I get ready and your videos about not caring makes me feel better. And whether it was a lie, whether I was saying it, believing it, it's starting to work. Like an aspirational truth kind of. Exactly. Thing. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. I that's one of the things I noticed with this podcast too. I've told some stories that I've never told before and it's like it takes the power away. Yes. It's liberating. From it the really thought. Is. Yes, totally. Yeah. It's so, it's so amazing. So to, you know, to all the people who think that social media is only evil, I say, look at things like that, that have, are beautiful, that have come out of it. And I feel like it's so hard to connect in this world. And like, I live on a big acreage too, and I can only see one other house from my house. I'm not meeting new people all the time is what I'm trying to say. Right. But in doing a podcast or doing a TikTok, you're able to connect with people who benefit from you and who you benefit from on a daily basis. And I think that's beautiful. I love it. It's huge, especially with COVID and, you know, stuff shut down. And then this Mm -hmm. having a small outlet of like a little safe place where I can be like, holy crap, like, you know, 30 other women feel exactly how I do when I get ready. I had no idea. I thought I was the only one that would cry oh, after my fourth it. outfit. You know, that's, yes. that's huge finding other, you know, kindred spirits. I love that. I love it. Okay. What is your strangest family tradition? Okay. It's not as much a tradition as in like, as a family, we cope with any trauma, death, anything horrible. We have a family chat and it goes straight to humor and gifts. So like, a couple years ago, my brother chopped off the tip of his finger, like with an axe. He was chopping wood and he sent pictures of the family chat. And the first comment was my husband saying, okay, so can we call you nubs now? Like there's no, <laughs> no give and take with that. Like some, my dad was in the hospital and my mom took like this awful picture of him just sitting and it was like a you know poorly taken picture. And instead of being like, oh, that's sad. How, you know, what's going on? We all sent a picture back of the same angle of someone sitting in a chair, like, making fun of her photography skills. So we, it's a ruthless group (laughs) chat that a normal person would be like, holy shit, you guys all need to go see a therapist. But that's my family. That is how we cope. This is why we don't need therapy. Exactly. have this outlet. (laughs) Exactly. So if you want sympathy, don't put it in in our family chat. You message someone personally Uh and be like, hey, I need a real reaction here. But if you put it in the family chat, you will get roasted. Yes. Oh my gosh. I love it. And there's a place in time, like, like you said, they're not coming after you. Yeah. If you don't want to be roasted, you just don't put it up exactly. there. Exactly. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Okay. If you could have any celebrity be your best friend, who would it be? Melissa McCarthy. Hands down. Oh, Hands I down. love her. I want to take her everywhere with me. I want to spend a day. I love her so much. She's my absolute number one. And have you reached out to her on TikTok? No, I didn't know if she has a TikTok. I, see, and I don't think I'm there. Like, I know that for other people, it's like, oh, you have a lot of followers. I don't feel that way at all. So to me, the fact that like anyone ever is excited to meet me is insane. And it like so humbling. I'm like, oh my gosh, why would you want to meet Aww. me? Like, I literally don't do anything. That's so cute. <laughs> so I would just Aww. send her like fan mail like anyone else and be like, I love you so much. You never know who who will actually want to have a genuine interaction with you, even if they are famous, you know, that's true. I just don't know how to go about like, at, you know, Melissa McCarthy, I would like you to come to my house and have a sleepover. We'll make pizza. This is my official invite. Like, I don't, I just don't know how that would come. If across. you wear a bra, you will not be let in. Yes. Yeah. Be like, Please bring your sweatpants <laughs> and your greasiest hair. And I just want uh-huh. to be with you. 
I'll tell my husband and be like, you take the kids and go. Melissa's coming over now. <laughs> Clear out. Yeah. Go. Get out. We've drilled for this. It's time. Yes. It's go time. <laughs> Maybe someday. <laughs> okay. What is your silliest memory with your best friend? Okay. We live in Washington and we pump our own gas here. And we drove to deep Oregon when we were 17. It's me and my friend, Emily. And um, they pump your gas and no one tells you that. So we drove to a gas station. We were like getting gas and this guy's coming out to like pump our gas. And my friend is like, what the hell is this guy coming to our car for? And I was like, I don't know. Go. We went to three different gas stations we literally were like, these are the creepiest people. Get like, out of here. Going, like, why are these guys approaching us? What is going on? Uh, it took us three gas stations. And so some, like, finally, we're like, what's up? You're like, we're sensing a pattern. Yeah. And they were like, oh, you know, we can pump your gas, blah, blah. And we're like, what the hell? Like, that was so foreign to us. And no one, I had no idea. So we learned something new, but. I, I think Oregon should have a big sign at the state line. Like, it's illegal to pump your own gas here. Okay, got it. Thanks, Oregon. Yes. I mean, now you know. Especially so close to a state that doesn't. You know, it'd be different if it was like a whole chunk of the area, but like just driving right, across state lines, thing. it takes an hour to get there. We pumped our gas 20 <laughs> minutes ago. That's right. It's so, so weird. weird. <laughs> ah, that's cute. This episode is brought to you by Shelfie Shop, a line of women's loungewear that is for the no bra zone. When I get home, I take my bra off and that's just sort of like a mental indicator to me that I'm in for the day. But then I sometimes feel like I'm flapping in the breeze and I need a little bit more support and some coverage so I don't traumatize the UPS man if I open the door without my bra on. So I started wearing shelf bra tanks, and then I decided that I wanted all of my pajamas to have shelf bras and could not find anything anywhere for years. Well, finally, I made a prototype. I designed my own. I loved them. And then I thought, hey, maybe other people would like this too. So I set about to design a line of loungewear that had two important aspects. Each outfit has to have a shelf bra. The shelf bra has to be soft. It has to have good nipple coverage, separation so that I don't look like I have a boob loaf in there like you do when you're in a sports bra. And all of Shelfie Shop's outfits have a pocket for your phone that's out of the way so that you can bend and squat and do anything you need to do and your phone's not in an uncomfortable place in your pocket. So I would be absolutely honored if you would head to shelfieshop.com, that's S-H-E-L-F-I-E-S-H-O-P-P-E.com to check out what I have for sale. Here is to incognito pajama wearing and being cozy. Okay, well, as you know, the point of this podcast is to tell some of your not so fancy stories so that we all feel like we can relate and we're less alone and also to demonstrate how bonds can be formed through sharing these stories. And like I said earlier, just even how freedom can be had from just even telling them. So what have you got for us today? Oh my gosh. I feel like I'm a, a filled with embarrassing stories. I feel like I'm a walking <laughs> clumsy person that doesn't know what's going on. And I, I do feel like my TikTok is a little bit in a bubble of that, of just clumsy, not knowing what I'm doing, stumbling through life. Like that's just what I do. So much of it comes from womanly questions, girly makeup, clothes. Like I've always felt like a bit of an outsider or like, I think we all feel like, oh, everyone else has it going on. What am I doing different? Even though people mm -hmm. probably think of you that way. Right. So the makeup questions that, uh, you know, I don't even put lotion on my face. I don't know what a skincare regimen is. I'm not sure the makeup thing. <laughs> holy crap, I'm like foundation with my hands, some mascara. What's this baking? What is double cleansing? What is contour? How do we do it? How, what, how do you color in your eyebrows? It's all just me behind all of the trends, like wondering like, okay, you guys look absolutely flawless. You guys all look like you have your shit together. And here I am like stumbling out of the house, like in mismatched clothes with like mascara on my eyelids. Like what, how do you guys do it? I remember a while back now you were like, capes, is that a thing? Are we doing that again, yeah. guys? Let me know. Like, and I was like, yeah. Our, our, our ponchos. ponchos or I forget, yeah. <laughs> you're like, 
are we doing that? Because I have one from the 90s I never got rid of. Can yes. I pull that thing out? <laughs> yes. And I feel like so many women and girls feel that way. Like you finally get like, oh, yeah, okay, this is cool. This is in. And then it's something totally new. And you're like, okay, wow. It's just changing so much. And I'm, I'm definitely one of the 30-year-old moms out here that's like, okay, what are we doing now? What's with this? I know. Sometimes I feel like I just need someone to come over and dress me so I cannot have to think about it. Absolutely. But but how do you, how are your eyelashes so long? Is that just like lucky genetics or what's happening it, with your eyelashes? It truly is. They, that's my, my one thing I've got going for me. I used to say I have good eyelashes and skinny ankles, but the skinny ankles are done. So <laughs> then my eyelashes is, I'm just riding strong. That's all I have. Okay. <laughs> and I have hair. I'm appreciative. I have the hair. Yeah. You have freaking amazing <laughs> hair. Yeah. It's, it's so, it's just so funny how our perceptions are so different from reality because the first time I saw you on TikTok, I started following you. Then more came through the feed of you. And I was like, this girl is so adorable, so pretty. Oh. And you know, like I can't even believe she has these questions. Like she seems like somebody I would go to for advice. And yet she's asking all these questions, but you're so right because we present a completely, not that you're trying to be fake, but it's just automatic. The yeah. perceptions, the exterior perceptions that people have of us are so different than what we're feeling like inside. Wouldn't it be nice if we could all just put a little bit more of how we actually are inside on our sleeves so that we could all relate to each other? Absolutely. You know? Yeah. And I, I feel like so, so many people in general, not even just women, but they feel like they're not lesser than necessarily. But yeah, like you, you feel like everyone around you knows what they're doing. And then you feel it yeah. just makes you feel like something's wrong with you or like that you don't know. So I think just expressing mm -hmm. that, whether it be fashion or makeup, and it's not saying like you're not good enough or you don't feel pretty enough or something. It's it's just the questions out loud. I like having a platform. Yeah. It's like, hang on. I got questions. Yeah. And it, you know, it, you've definitely hit a nerve. Other people have those same questions. Yeah. Too. So that's, Aww, that's been great it. to hear. And then the embarrassing stories are to share, like you said, are liberating for some reason. <laughs> so I shared them to a bunch of people and now I, I'm paying for it. <laughs> I'm going to do my bunny story first. I was in middle school and I found this bunny. My hound dog had gotten to the mom and there was an injured bunny. So I took it in and I used to take in all kinds of animals. I oh, named awesome. it Frankie Olivia. I wasn't sure if it was a boy or a girl. And I loved this bunny <laughs> so much. And my parents were like, yep, you can nurse it back to health, whatever. So I fed it with a little dropper, like a little milk dropper and kept it in my pocket. I took it to school in my pocket and it was oh tiny, gosh. like three inches. Oh, and so it would just wow. sleep like, you know, it was just a baby baby mm -hmm. and it started getting stronger and bigger and it could like barely hop around. And I had a bed for mm -hmm. it next to my bed that I tuck it in every night. And one night I fell asleep <laughs> holding it and petting it. And I woke up and my hand was like out like I was holding it, but it was not there. So like I get up and I'm looking mm. around and I'm thinking she hopped away and I can't find her anywhere. So I lift up all my blankets and she is a pancake flat oh, no. bunny <laughs> under my ass. And I freaked out. I tried to like smush her back together. And I was like, oh my oh. God. And I was like crying and I woke up my whole oh, family. How traumatic. I mean, oh. it was traumatic. And like that moment was traumatic. And yes, I understand. I like, I, I killed an, a little animal, but what comes after well, you didn't it, mean to. I didn't mean to, I buried it. You know, everything's good. I cried I, for mm. weeks, but to this day, like 20 years later, people call me Lenny, like from Of Mice and Men. Like, you know, the mm -hmm. one that like loved the puppy to death because yes. they just like love it so much. Or they'll like joke about me holding their children. They're like, oh, uh, Kristen, you can't be left alone with anything tiny. Oh Don't sleep gosh. with that. Oh. Um, so, yeah, I get I get that often. People call me Flapjack. Oh. That was no. a rough one to recover from. So that's what I mean when I'm still paying for these stories that I have told people. Oh my gosh. Wow. And you're like, gee, I, should, I really should have kept that one to myself. Yeah. I'm like, I shouldn't have called my best friend crying at 3 a.m. being like, I smushed my little bunny. Um, but I that's did. so sad. Yes. Oh, I'm really sorry. It's okay. I've given my family lots of ammo for, for over the years, for sure. Yeah. You know, it. Uh, it's just one of those sacrifices that we we – we give to, yes. to our loved ones. Give them something to tease us about. Yes. <laughs> oh. oh, that's awful. Yeah. So that one was done. And then um, a couple years later, my mom used to work at Starbucks. So like we we were old enough to get ready by ourselves and get on the bus. And so she was mm -hmm. already at work. And it was me and my brother home. And she called and she and I was I was probably like 15. I don't remember ages very well, but I was old enough to know better. And she called and she was like, oh my gosh, you guys, there was a huge earthquake on the East Coast and it's coming our way. You need to get ready 
for an, go stand in a doorway, whatever. Any normal person would have been like, oh, funny mom, like you can't predict earthquakes, no big deal. But it's my mother and I trusted her. Mm-hmm. And so <laughs> I go, wake up my brother. And I'm like, Robbie, there's an earthquake coming, wake up. And he's like, what? And I was like, there's an earthquake coming. And he's two years younger than me. And he was even a little hesitant. He was like, okay, you know, you don't know what's going on, whatever. So we gather the dogs and we put anything fragile on the ground. And we are in a doorway trying to get the dogs to sit with us. And I'm crying. I'm hysterical. I don't like natural disasters. So I'm literally bawling. And I'm like, Robbie, I'm really sorry. I'm such a mean sister. I apologize for everything I've ever done. And he was like, okay, I'm sorry too. Like, we'll be okay. And I could not stop crying. So he said, would you feel safer if we put on helmets? And I said, "Um, absolutely. So he went and got like a motorcycle helmet and a bike helmet. And we strapped them on our heads as two teenagers standing in a doorway, wearing helmets, crying, holding the dogs. Like we had four labs and we're like, oh my God. And my mom calls back like, this is going on for 20 minutes. And she calls back and she's like, oh, April Fool's, there's no earthquake. (laughs) <laughs> oh, oh my god <laughs> you're like i you can have foot my therapy bill now for the rest of my life oh, that was way too good Mom. i've never hung up on my parents but i hung up on her and i was so pissed and my brother like literally went back to bed he was like all right well everything's fine i was traumatized <laughs> so i tell this story now and everyone's like oh you're so funny whatever but you would put on a helmet if there was a way to protect an earthquake and you knew it was coming why wouldn't you put on I a helmet think freaking brilliant. You know, here's, the, I'm so gullible that when you started telling the story, I was like, how does her mom know? Okay. That yeah. an, it, like, it's not just me. I mean, <laughs> no, I'm like, wait, I didn't think earthquakes traveled like tsunamis. Right? <laughs> like, how did- <laughs> everyone I tell, they're like, you can't yeah. predict those. And I was like, how do I know that? I don't know. 15 years I trust my mother. Right. Like here I am, 49 years old, and I'm like, wait a minute. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> I want you to let that sink in. Like you're not alone. <laughs> Thank you. Please. Okay, secondly, the the helmets are brilliant. I mean, come on. Thanks. If you have time to prepare for a natural disaster and you don't have a storm cellar, then I mean protect the noggin. It's our most important. Yeah, right. I love it. Um, your your brother was really thinking clearly. That was that was good. And then <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of this story of this neurosurgeon in Alaska somewhere. He, I guess he must have been kind of remote. And I don't even know where I heard this. So who, who knows if it's even true. But <laughs> but I think it is. I think it's true. My dad's a neurosurgeon. He's retired now. And I don't know why this tickled my funny bone. But this this neurosurgeon, it was the only neurosurgeon for like miles and like days travel away or whatever. And so whenever he drove, he wore a helmet. Oh, my God. <laughs> Because he's like, if if my head gets hurt, who will help me? Seriously. I mean, I'm like, now that is brilliant. That's not a bad way to think. I guess it's a little bit living in fear, but it's also like, well, it's kind of common sense. It's quirky, but it's not a bad idea. (laughs) If you're the only neurosurgeon. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I've been laughing about that for decades. I, I wish I knew more about that story. Someday I'll have to do some Google research and see if I can find out. I would out love to just see him driving true. around. I'd look I'd be like, what is he doing? <laughs> see, but here's the thing that makes me think his wisdom was somewhat questionable. I think he drove a convertible, so I was like, well, yeah. you know, convertible with a helmet better than a convertible without a helmet. But I'll tell you what's better than both. A car with a top. That's, <laughs> That's like a built-in <laughs> helmet. Uh, yeah, exactly. Oh, double double protection there. <laughs> that is amazing. Oh my gosh. Yeah. All right. Well, tell me about the kitchen floor. Okay. <laughs> so this one, there's no excuse because I'm a grown ass adult now at this point. <laughs> and there have been, you know, many embarrassing things along the way, but I married my husband. He's a wonderful man. I absolutely love him. And he's so sweet. And I had food poisoning. So I was having a bit of a pooping issue. So Mm -hmm. I don't know what I ate. I don't know how it happened, but I was literally having to sit on a towel on the couch and like not Mm. wear any shorts because I'm like, holy crap, what is happening? And I was like throwing up and like all this sick stuff going on. And he was so sweet. He was just like, what do you need? What do you need? And like my son was here. I don't think I had my daughter at the time. And um, we have a pretty small kitchen and I had to go and I was running to my bathroom, which is through the kitchen. And I felt it and it started happening Mm. like bridesmaids, like in the street type of situation and I just stood there and my husband stood there (laughs) I was mortified and I was like I'm 
Jane. And he was like, oh my God. <laughs> and I was, it was literally like the Melissa McCarthy. I was like, don't come in here. I was like, go away. Oh, I could not even talk. We don't shoot with the door open. Like he hadn't even seen me go to the bathroom. We're like newlyweds. And I'm sitting here just pooping in our kitchen. No. And it was uncontrollable. <laughs> I was crying. Oh it was God. messy. It was insane. And then what's even sweeter is that I had to run to the bathroom because it just kept going. And I came mm-hmm. out and he was like discreetly like mopping it away. And I was oh. like, get out of here. Don't touch anything. Oh. So that like that happened. But now he likes to joke about it like we do as the family. We roast each other. And so we literally <laughs> will go to someone's house and he'll be like, Kristen. <laughs> Look at their kitchen. That's a nice kitchen floor. It'd be a shame if someone <laughs> shit on it. And I'm like, babe, stop. You're like, these people don't know the story. They're thinking, why on earth is he saying yeah. that? Yeah. And they like look at me and I'm like, literally stop. I'm not going to poop in their kitchen. <laughs> or like, he's made the joke going in somewhere and he's like, oh, do you guys have a bathroom? And they're like, oh, yeah, it's here. And he's like, oh, you have a kitchen. That's fine. Like, that she'll go there. That's cool. <laughs> that'll, that'll work. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and I get it. I would too. Or he'll be the like, turkey. yeah, if we're feeling sassy with the kids in the car and he'll be like, okay, raise your hand. Um, if you've pooped your pants and like I do. And then he's like, raise your hand if you pooped in the kitchen. And like, everyone has their hands down and he's like, Kristen. And I'm like, I know, <laughs> I know. Oh. <laughs> so after, you know, after two kids and being embarrassed of all that happening, I think that um, pooping in front of him in our kitchen was it's up there with reasons why I'm still thankful I'm married. <laughs> yeah, it's all uphill from here. Like, really I can is. do literally anything. And, you know, he walks in on you with a breast pump on each breast, and you're sitting there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, you know, you've already seen me poop in the kitchen. <laughs> He's seen me at my, I would say, absolute worst. And it's not even like I looked cute that day. So it's not even like there was anything. It was just all bad. And the fact that he no stayed redeeming at home, quality. Yeah, no. <laughs> And then it was just like that awkward after, Aww. like I just came and sat down after everything was cleaned up and we just sat there and he was just, he could not stop laughing. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm thankful for him. Oh my gosh. This is such a cool idea you have to do embarrassing stories. It's the best. Well, you know, it all started when I got stuck in a dress in the Dillard's dressing room and I was shopping alone yeah. and I had to have the shopkeeper come in and help me get out of there. I wanted to ask her if I was her first, but then I decided I couldn't, my, like my self-esteem couldn't handle the answer. So I just didn't ask her. Right. But then by the time, <laughs> by the time I came home, I, I was totally amused by it. And so I wrote a story and people came out of the woodworks like, oh, that's totally happened to me. And I'm like, what? Yeah. Why? At the age of 40, whatever, did I think I, that was a first? Like, why are we telling each other these stories? It so would make you feel you, so much better. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, just even hearing you say crying in my closet after my fourth outfit. I'm like, oh my gosh. Sometimes when I'm trying to get ready. I'm trying to get dressed for church and my husband comes in and I'm like, I want to scream at him. Get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hideous. Don't look at me. <laughs> like I'm not ready for public consumption, including yes. you. <laughs> exactly. And it makes you like irritable. And then you're like embarrassed yeah. that you're irritable. And then you feel and then you're guilty. Sweating. For being a bitch, yeah. And then you're like, I'm uh, sorry. Uh-huh. Like it shouldn't be this big of a deal. Uh, and it's like, just buy clothes that fit. I but, know. You know. It's that's what I need to get over is is the waiting for my body to be okay enough to wear the clothes that I want to wear. Uh, that's what I'm done with. And it's not because I'm mm-hmm. feeling wonderful and beautiful and okay in my body. It's because I'm tired of waiting for that body to come. Like it's been three right. years after I've had kids. Like I need to be able to get myself dressed in normal clothes and be okay and not be like, oh, well, I'm not fitting into my small jeans. Get bigger jeans. Okay. It's right. okay. Literally those low rise jeans. You don't want to wear those. Anymore. Yeah. Get yourself you some high comfortable even when they did fit. Yeah. Right. Lord have mercy. Oh, totally yeah. So there's a, a stylist that I love and she has a podcast called Everyday Style with Jen. No, it, her, her podcast is called Everyday Style School, I think. And she's been on my show and I just love her. And she does seasonal capsule wardrobes where she picks out a bunch of clothes for the season that like kind of show you what's on trend and how to wear them. And then she gives you links to to buy some stuff that's similar to that. And it's just, to me, a, a ton of help because the new silhouettes and stuff, like why super wide leg jeans after we're used to wearing skinny jeans for a decade, like, wait, how yes. how do I wear that? It's, you know, it's difficult. You should actually look into her, and I'll link to that okay. too. She's so much fun. I think you would love it, though. I think her. I think she's very talented at picking out things that are sort of universally appealing for the season that are kind of on trend. But. I love that. And, and now that I listen to podcasts officially, because this is my very first podcast yeah. I've ever listened to, is yours. Now I can go and listen to others. And I didn't. 
I didn't hate it. You know, I thought I wouldn't like listening to podcasts because I like music so much. So I, mm-hmm. I would, that's what was making mm-hmm. me hesitant to like, everyone's like, oh, do you listen to podcasts? I'm like, no, if I ever have time, I have the radio on. But then I caught myself listening to one after another of yours. And I was like, okay, I see Aww. why people do this. All right. Well, it's time to talk about what you've been loving lately. What have you been loving lately that you think the listeners might love too? Um, I, I don't know if it's even an older show or not, but um, my husband works nights. So I try to find a show that's not super scary, but still like dr- I like dramatic, mm. scary shows. So I've been watching mm-hmm. Women Who Kill. And for some reason, I always thought that was like a documentary or something, but it's not. It's on Amazon. (laughs) And it has Jennifer Goodwin in it. um, And it's the perfect amount of like dark mystery, like almost like a Desperate housewives type vibe to it. But also Mm. you can watch it by yourself. Like if your husband's gone or yes, in the dark with your kids sleeping and it won't freak you out. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That's that's perfect. (laughs) Exactly. Just freaking and interesting enough, but you don't. Yeah, you're not freaked out yes checking the door yeah awesome my husband and I like to watch tv together and there are very few shows that appeal to both of us but this sounds like it might and the other one that we found recently you guys is we talked about it on the show I think it was a listener who told me about it it's called only murders in the building Uh, oh no that was my girl my girlfriend Kristen who spells her name (laughs) the same way oh cool yeah that's right I wasn't yeah I wasn't a guest it is with Steve Martin and Martin Short and Selena Gomez which is like wow so such an unlikely combination and there's a murder in their this fancy building they live in in New York City and it's, it's kind of fun but it's only half an hour and they're only rolling it out once per week so it's not one that you can it. sit and binge right and it's short but anyway Scott and I both like that so yeah we're gonna have to try women who kill we might like both like yeah that it's too. definitely a guy and girl show like my husband would love it I'm just watching it because he's gone but um it's definitely one that like uh, for all all ages all types so I loved it cool Are you willing to share one surprising thing about you that nobody would be able to tell just by looking? Um, I, I think I just did this in a video, um, but I can say my alphabet backwards pretty fast. And that Okay, I saw that. Did you? Okay, that's it, my only thing. It, it wowed me, and I was hoping that – I forgot about it already, though, because we were chatting. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, yeah. I, <laughs> I, um, I was completely blown away. I don't know how you do that. I think it would maybe take me 20 minutes to say the alphabet backwards, so lay it on us. Give Razzle-dazzle us with your skills. Okay, here we go. Z-Y-X-W-V-U-T-S-R-Q-P-O-N-M-L-K-J-I-H-G-F-E-D-C-B-A. What? And I can do it faster, and I can do it slower, but that is my only – talent and now it's not secret I don't have I have no secrets from anyone because that's my only back pocket (laughs) talent I have that is incredible I want to know I don't I don't understand how your brain works I mean it's just a memorization fascinating but my you just memorized it yeah my mom we had a long car drive and my mom she knew somehow so she taught all of us kids how to say it backwards by like little chunks she'd be like okay say zyx and say that over and over and then you know whatever and so we all can do it and we just memorized it and I didn't think anything of it I thought all people kind of knew how to do it until I got Mm -hmm. older and they were like oh my god you can say your alphabet backwards I'm like yeah but now posting it on tiktok it looks like everyone else can too all the comments are like oh I can do it too and I'm like oh that's my one that's it never (laughs) <laughs> I've never even heard anyone do it before. That's so crazy. Kristen, I have a hard enough time saying it forwards. Like I <laughs> forward is not have... as calm. <laughs> You're like, well, I didn't practice it as much yeah. forward. But like I have this, I help my husband with our dental business and it's just really small. So we still use paper charts for our patients and we just put them in an accordion file. And every time I have to file one, I'm like, A, B, C, okay. You know? <laughs> yeah. I do and too. then you know you have to alphabetize the whole word not just the, the first letter and I'm like this is exhausting that is <laughs> difficult I get that I hate having to alphabetize stuff Jeez, it's, it's a, such a burden it really is. but oh my yeah that was it that was a really good talent. oh thanks oh I love it okay tell the listeners where they can find you I know I already told them but you tell them too um so TikTok and it's Kristen Cook K-R-I-S-T-E-N-C-O-O-K and then my name has a green heart after it and I do there's a people with multiple accounts from me so I just recently changed my picture too so if you see like five accounts with the same picture those aren't me I'm just mm. the one um, and then I recently, as of like weeks ago, have an Instagram because I hear that's what the kids are doing. So I got an Instagram and I don't even know 
my Instagram name. I think it's, I think it's Kristen Cook, K-A-C. Um, so yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's K-R-I-S-T-E-N dot C-O-O-K dot K-A-C. And okay. That, I just, that's it. Back, I was just looking at it. Yeah. Well, yay. <laughs> So fun. Oh my gosh, you're hilarious. You were so much fun. Thank you so much for telling us your stories today. Of course. Thanks for having me. This has been a blast. I want to like call you tomorrow and talk. (laughs) I'm like, I'm going to miss you now. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. You were awesome. Thank you so much for listening to the Fancy Free Podcast today. Wasn't Kristen adorable? I just love her. I'm totally hooked on her TikTok. She's so cute. She's so easy to watch. She has such funny questions. And I just, I, she's, she's just the bomb. I wish she was my next door neighbor. I'd be trudging over there every day. <laughs> Make sure to check out the show notes for today's episode so you can get all the links we discussed at fancyfreepodcast.com slash episode 125. Remember to follow Fancy Free wherever you're listening to this episode so that new episodes pop into your feed each week. And if you have a listener story to tell, email me at notfancy at fancyfreepodcast.com. You can either send me a voice memo or type your story out. Or if you want to be interviewed for the podcast, I'd love to hear about that. And if you want more connection, laughter, and sharing, join the Fancy Free Facebook group. We have so much fun over there. It's our private little slice of the internet. Only members get to see what you write on there. All the members are listeners of the show. And actually, if you wanted to submit a listener story, that would be a good way to do it too. The question of the week this week is, have you ever worn a helmet in a, in a non-traditional sense? And what I'm thinking, of, oh, I'll tell you, I'll tell you over there. So if you want to hear about my non-traditional helmet wearing experience, join the Fancy Free Facebook group. Also, I'd love it if you'd follow the Fancy Free podcast on Instagram and Shelfie Shop Cozy Clothes on Instagram. I'll link to both in the show notes. Also, make sure you go over to shelfieshop.com, that's S-H-E-L-F-I-E-S-H-O-P-P-E.com to grab some of the best pajamas on the planet, man. Use the code Fancy Free for free shipping and you'll be hooked. Have a wonderful week and remember, no one is as fancy as they look. <laughs> <laughs>